All right, so this is gonna be a tour of the six by eight hunting blind. I probably have, I don't know, maybe $400 in the material. Most of it is stuff that I just kind of have laying around or I've been saving up for a while. Uh, I bought the four by fours, the elevator brackets, the plywood, a few tubes of caulk, uh, some screws. So yeah, I don't know, I'm guessing around 400 bucks into it. I don't really have plans. I just winged it as I went along, drew up kind of a little sketch, but it was pretty rough. And then uh, I don't I also don't have a, a material list. So this video is pretty much just to kind of show you what I did, maybe give you some ideas on building your own from it. So I'll start with the frame. These are eight foot brown treat four by fours I bought at the lumber yard. I've got four elevator brackets on there. Bought them on Amazon. They have a couple different types of grades. I read some reviews. I ended up buying some that were a little heavier gauge metal. I didn't trust those light ones. The cross members are uh, mostly there was a guy that took his deck apart and had a pile of deck, used deck material laying on the side of the road with a free sign on it. So I loaded that up. They were two by sixes or two by eights. I ripped some of them in half. Some of the ones on the bottom there are the five quarter deck boards. So I saved those. I got those, I think last summer and I've just kind of been hanging on to them. Anytime I see something that I think would work for a box blind, I save it. These are, these are uh, those mobile home anchors. I got th four or five or six of those for free too somewhere. I don't remember where I even got them, but I've had them for several years, maybe five years. They weren't, they were 16 or 18 inches. I wasn't quite comfortable with how long they were. So I poured a circle of concrete around the base and then I dug a 16 inch hole and then buried them in there. So there's a lot more pulling resistance if we do get a strong wind. I had a couple box blinds go down last summer. We had a windstorm that came through with 100 plus mile an hour winds and I don't, I don't want that to happen again. So I did, one on each side of the blind there and I've got them a bracket lag bolted up underneath. The base of this is made out of two by eights treated and I end up doing a bump out for the heater. You'll see that when we get inside. I've got two two windows that'll hinge upward and then one that hinge outward for archery in the front. The cross members I got here are metal. They were from a uh, gar overhead garage door that had been taken out and I, I kept those too. I just don't like going spending $300 on cross members and stuff if you've got stuff laying around that'll work. So I think those should do just fine. These The ladder's made out of um, two by sixes too, part of that deck that I picked up for free or deck material laying on the road. I came up with something here. I don't like going up two by fours. I'm in, I'm in northern Wisconsin so a lot of times when I'm hunting out of a rifle box blind or shooting house it's in the winter and you've got snow on your boots. So what I did is I took actually a bunch of angle iron from, these are from a couple of old bed frames. I just, again, I save everything. So I save those angle irons. I cut them, I think they're two feet, two feet long. I drilled a, a quarter inch hole and then ran a two and a half, I think these are, inch screw for holding uh, roofing sheet metal down. Took the saw, laid them, I, I screwed them, or actually clamped them together. And then I ran saw cuts through just deep enough to get these, these angle irons in there. So I got this, got this nice no slip thin edge so when I go up the ladder I'm hoping it's not going to make a bunch of sound if I've got snow on my boots and hopefully by the time I get to the top my boots will be clean from the snow. I did put a little landing up there because uh, I, I just I like to have a step coming out before I start going down the ladder and I left the ladder um, a little bit longer so I've got something to hang on to. Another thing I did I went a little further and put a I don't know if it's a three foot maybe four foot overhang on there just to keep some snow and ice from building off on that platform and also hopefully off the steps I might get a little bit of dripping but again it's not going to accumulate on the top of those angle irons so I'm not too worried about it. I made a couple metal brackets for the bottom there picked out a couple of stout treated two by fours and used them for the brackets. Here's a closer look at those brackets or gussets I've got them bolted through down there and also I've got one bolt on the top this is just Tin. Oh, I got the roof tin too, free from a friend. His shed blew apart in that storm, so he had an insurance claim, had a bunch of tin, used tin left over. So that's on the roof and on, on the porch roof also. This door, found that laying in the middle of the road. I think it's from a mobile home. It was pretty pretty short and uh, maybe a 32 inch door. I thought it was perfect for this. So it was white, but I painted it brown. Then on the inside, as you can see from the outside, I've got the two windows, big windows on the wall that flip up. I'm look, kind of looking into a northwest uh, view into my food plot here, about a three or four acre cornfield, and then I've got some brassicas on the back side. I took some heavy landscape fabric, 
and uh, staple them to the top so that I've got some sort of a shade so I can sit and look right about like this and not be blinded by the sun from the sky. And if it's cold and windy, I don't have to have these windows open. I've got these little turn knobs made out of, I think, half-inch PVC pipe that I cut. Got rare earth magnets on the windows, so all I got to do is flip that up and it stays up like that. And then I can hunt and shoot. If it's not windy, I'm going to leave them open, but I hate getting hit in the face by a wind, especially if it's in late November, which is when our gun season is. Painted everything flat black, at least what you can see from the outside. I did end up putting, uh, before I put these walls on, I just ended up having, I had some leftover roof felt or tar paper, so I stapled that onto the inside of my plywood before I put it on the walls, and also the OSB before I put it on the ceiling. I stapled it so I didn't have to do all that painting. And then on the bottom, I bought some carpet remnants at the home center. It was a six foot wide by I think 12 foot piece long, so I rolled it up the sides too, so if I set backpacks with straps or something on there, it's not gonna hit. I wrapped it around the two by four so that I don't kick it with my boots and make a bunch of racket. Heater cubbies down there. I'm gonna put a battery from my boat in here once I winterize the boat. And so I've got a couple little clips in a, in a cord running up. Bought a $12 fan on Amazon so that uh, I don't get my windows fogged up. I did put some Rain-X on these glass windows too so that hopefully that'll help. Got a couple vents, one on each end. It's aluminum uh, soffit vent or something. You can buy them for about $2 a piece. They come in three louvered sections. I cut them apart, use just one. I still have one left over for this. I guess I didn't show the center window here for archery, but if you've seen any of my other my other videos on building uh, octagon or vertical window blinds or my octagon blind build, it's kind of the same concept. I got three hinges on there. That one swings open. Got the garage door stop down there to um, help keep the the weather out. I did go with pretty pretty good size overhangs on this box blind too, just to help keep water away from my windows. And then I got it set up so that I can have two office chairs. Those are from my ice shack, so when hunting season's over, I'll take them out and put them back in my ice fishing sh shanty. Got a uh, transmission fluid funnel there screwed to the wall with a old piece of hose going down. You can know what that's for. I don't put a barrel, bury a bucket or put anything in the ground. I just leave it go outside. I think that you just don't get the smell if you don't have it in a in a barrel underground. And uh, also, I'm not. I personally don't think that um, urine has an effect on, I just don't think it bothers deer. That's my personal opinion. I guess it's debatable, but anyway, here's the view. I've got four rows of evergreens coming in that'll hopefully be a screen from the neighbor's field to the south here. Cornfield's all set up. Raska's back there. I've also got uh, oats, beans, and peas and winter rye on a, a half acre, three quarters of an acre of that, besides the brassicas. All the bedding is hopefully from the north here, so I can't wait to hunt out of this thing. I think it's gonna be pretty good. I guess if you watched it this far and you want a little more detail, this too here is that garage door stop that I used on the windows. I did put a ledge all the way around. This is a three-quarter board, inch board to hold the ceiling. This is some leftover uh, LP trim from a building project. And so I really only have the, the garage door stop with the rubber flap on the bottom of these windows. Uh, again, I had that big overhang on there, so I, th I think that I'm going to be okay. I didn't need to put it on the sides and up underneath the top. So I just put it along the bottom of each window. These windows I actually got out of my basement. They were sliders, and I had to replace them because the outside uh, storm portions were getting bad. And So I ended up saving those. They were double pane, but the seal had been broken and there was fog in them, so I ended up taking taking the windows apart and, and changing them back down to one pane, which I'm okay with because you can always wipe the fog or condensation off of a single pane, but once it gets inside, you're kind of hosed. I screwed this rounded piece of uh, two by 10, I think it was, that I cut out there so that you got an elbow rest if you're gonna shoot. It's actually 260 yards to the far corner of my food plot back there, so it's gonna need a steady rest if that's where the big buck is standing. Under the windows, I put some shelf, wrapped them with that landscape fabric first, so I got room to set my coffee or pop or maybe beer. If my dad comes out, it'll probably be both beer. <laughs> We'll both be drinking beer. The same trim kind of goes for my free mobile home door here. I just screwed the hinges to the 2x4 frame that I had. Had some of this LP Smart Siding trim so that at least there's a ledge on the inside. I didn't put any rubber or anything on that. I don't know. It's, it seems to close pretty pretty well. This is the only place I, I had a piece, a strip of rubber from that um, garage door stop that I cut off. I cut a half, half inch off and I put some silicone on there and put it on there just so it helps make a seal maybe a little bit quieter when it's closing. There's the walkout. 
One final thing I did here was put some camouflage netting around the base. I bought that on Amazon. It was like 20 bucks. I don't know if it's going to last very long. If I get two or three years out of it, I guess that'll be good. Help, you know, helps to conceal getting in and, in and out of the blind. I stapled the heck out of it, so I think it's going to stay on there. I just don't know if it's going to hold together. One thing I forgot to mention earlier is that I elevated this with a help of a friend, of course. Thanks, Dave. And uh, a skid steer. We had a skid steer with pallet forks on it. A skid steer reaches about nine feet high, so that's why I went with these eight foot poles. I didn't need to go any higher than that anyway. It just it's farther up I am, I think the more I got to climb a ladder and fall or you know be seen from the deer that are out in the food plot. So uh, hey, if you like my videos about uh, how I get myself set up to be more comfortable, maybe more of an effective deer hunter, I love building stuff. And uh, if there's some ideas that you can take away from this, well, that's great. That's the goal. So please hit that subscribe button to see what videos I've got coming out down the road from here. Thanks for watching.